everybody. Welcome to the show. Uh, another edition of That's Railroading. <laughs> yeah, where we bring the railroad to you. And we do love doing it too. Okay, and I got a, I got a shout out for a very special person who uh, really watches all my videos and really enjoys them. So, howdy Joey. And uh, we're going to bring the railroad to you today. And we do love doing it too. Okay. <laughs> A lot of, uh, if you guys watched my last couple of videos, the one on the uh, setting the rail on fire, the fire snake, and a couple ones before that about putting track bolts in, a lot of questions, a lot of questions. So we're going to go over uh, some things that people want to know that I didn't answer in those two. If you want to watch either of those videos, link is in this video's description to watch both of them. Okay, so let's get right into it. All right, and... Uh, I did want to tell you, uh, a lot of times I make these videos, I'm on my lunch period right now. Every, you know, I work eight hours a day. I do get a half hour lunch period every uh, every shift. Uh, a lot of the guys, they like to go into the lunch room and sit down and eat. But uh, I, it's, I do spend, I do make, uh, spend some of this time uh, making videos. So I am on my lunch break. All right, clear that up for a few people. So they wanted to know about fire snake. All right, so one of the things they wanted to know about the fire snake was what's in it. And let me see, I'm kind of shooting right into the sun here, maybe. I don't know if I can get this any better, that, uh, but I'll read it to you. Contains isopropanol or denatured ethanol, carbon black, hydro-desulfurized metal distillants. Now... I can't tell you what all that stuff is, uh, but that's what's in the fire snake. Okay, and uh, this is a warning. This product can expose you to chemicals, including carbon black, known to the state of California to cause cancer. And like I said in that video, there's one thing you don't want to do when you light that fire snake. There's uh, four gel-filled packs. Uh, uh, they're like sausages and that's what that gel is made out of but there's four in each container and uh, sometimes in the past when we uh you don't want to breathe those fumes because those fumes <laughs> they will put you on your knees they're uh highly uh, toxic the fumes are but anyway um uh, <laughs> before the snake came out. I got this first snake about 15 years ago. And before the snake, we used what's called fire rope. I still have some. And this is in pretty decent shape. And uh, the original fire rope had asbestos in it. Uh, they quit making the fire rope with asbestos. This is a fiberglass textile yarn. That's what it called. We kept it in the five gallon buckets. Kept it in diesel fuel. Now this stuff here it's real sloppy to work with. As you can imagine, it's full of diesel fuel, so you got to have rubber gloves when you pull it out. And uh, it's hard to get... It's real sloppy. Anyway, it does not burn as long as the fire snake does. The fire snake burns a little bit longer. Uh, this is easier to light. Sometimes the fire snake is not always easy to light if these cans sit around for... Especially out in the sun. I try to keep a lot of my cans in the building. But uh, it wants to dry them gel pilt filled packs out in the summer with that stuff outside, even though it's a sealed container. Uh, so sometimes they are a little bit harder to light. When these are brand new, they're easy to light. I said that's easy to light. Uh, with the old fire rope, I always uh, had a spray bottle and I take diesel fuel with me and spray keep spraying that to keep the fire burning uh said the fumes are toxic for that i did enjoy seeing the uh <laughs> black smoke and smelling the diesel fuel burning with the fire rope anyway uh i don't think either one of these products are allowed in california in california if they have a pull apart they use a hydraulic rail puller anyway and that brings up before the fire rope i had and i don't have it here uh it got thrown away 
a lot of years ago when I got this fire snake, but uh, they used an old simplex rail puller. So you take the, uh, take the, if you, that rail puller had bolts that went in, you put, let's say we had a pull apart here at three and had a ratchet on there and you could extend it out and then you put two bolts in put your nuts on two bolts on this side put your nuts on and then you had to hand ratchet it and uh that was a struggle you obviously had to knock all the anchors off to get it to run with that old simplex rail puller <laughs> well we're on the alden website here's uh i'm going to show you this because it's kind of hard to imagine what I uh, said about that right here and right here here and here are the bolts and then this is the uh, screw ratchet and you put a bar in there and turn the ratchet and you don't know how many times I skipped the tooth <laughs> but anyway that's what the ratchet uh, poor is i look at the price on that puppy i didn't even know they still made these but there you have it so now you know what that looks like i know the one we had wasn't made by alden but like i said i no longer have it so now you put these through the bolt holes and put the nuts on the other side okay how about that Real puller. <laughs> uh, with the uh, fire rope, you don't have to uh, knock the anchors off. Although you, I sometimes, if I got a big gap, then I will knock the anchors back. And then after we get our joint made and it cools down, I'll knock the anchor. I'll reset the anchors if need be. But there you go. All right. Uh, Hope that clears up. Now, here's another thing. We're here on our third track, a storage track where they got cars that need worked on. So, don't worry about a bolt being out there. It's no big deal. But, uh, the guys asked me why I put, if you watch the fire snake video, I had a pull apart and I put the snake on the east end of the pull apart instead of on both ends of the uh, joint now why we do that here we kind of got a unique situation here where we have unidirectional loads uh, in other words all our loads travel east okay the empties travel west never do we have loads traveling west so and I've never made a video on rail creep. I will do that at some point in the future. Uh, there's a lot to talk about that. So we're just going to go quick over this on rail creep. But those loads all going one way. Uh, and we always break in several locations going east. We never break, use the car brakes or the locomotive brakes when we're going to the mine with empties. So with all that unidirectional traffic then the rail always wants to run what we call run is creep it's the same thing runs to the east so i put it on the fire snake on the east end of the joint in order to pull the rail back if we had bi-directional loads meaning we'd have roads going east and loads going west then that would kind of equal out the rail creep a good bit and I could have a lot more success if I put the fire snake on both ends of the joint. But I hope you understand that now. Hope that clears that up. Okay, another question, big question I have, why do bolts break? Well, you know, we got heavy coal loads going over these joints all the time. Uh, it's around 30... Okay, so you're looking at 33,000 pounds per wheel hitting every joint, every wheel. 
okay so these bolts go in here and uh, all our track bolts are made to arima specifications <laughs> That's good. The train's halfway here. But the ARIMA is the American Railway Engineering Maintenance Away Association. Uh, they have specs on everything on a railroad. But all our track bolts are made to ARIMA specs. But over many years' time, uh, with the heavy loads hitting these joints, plus the contraction of the rail pulling against the bolts in cold weather you know eventually the steel gets fatigued and uh <laughs> and at some point in time eventually you know that's the, the, the bolts are going to break usually uh, that's 16 miles of jointed track over uh, close to 26,000 bolts in this track <laughs> you know it's an it's a never-ending thing putting bolts in it's just the way it is you know jointed track is a maintenance nightmare Okay, here's another, here's another, <coughs> oh, excuse me, here's another thing, and uh, I don't know why, but it seems like every video I get, you know, why don't you weld these rails? Well, all right, you long time viewers know we do not interchange with another railroad, okay? That means we don't connect with any other railroad. We are an isolated railroad. We go from Kirby at the mine, the prep plant, to here at Alicia at our harbor facility where we dump the train over there. Okay? We don't interchange. Don't connect to another railroad. Thus, everything has to get trucked in here. All our cars, all our locomotives, all our rail, all the maintenance away equipment, everything gets trucked in. So, being that... You know, in 1975, 1976, when we, they built the track, you know, they brought it in on tractor trailers, that 39-foot stick of rail. Impossible to get that continuous welded rail in here, okay? That's why we have a jointed track, because they just couldn't get the, uh, those, if, now if we interchanged, then we could get a, a rail train in here, with those real long sticks and that would have been wonderful but we don't and we never will uh, the norfolk southern has across the river over here the loveridge secondary and on down there uh about five miles or so it's a place called poland mines and i think you're going to see a video about that in the future here fairly soon but uh there's a siding down there that's where all our rolling stock was taken to and then trucked in over route 88 up to here and you can imagine trucking that's why we don't get new locomotives because trucking a locomotive in here as you can imagine is astronomical expense all right i'm gonna take a little break here and i'll be right back okay we're back uh one of the biggest questions i've gotten since i started making these videos is and uh, sometimes it's a criticism, but that's okay. Why don't you use concrete ties? Well, I made a video on that uh, several years ago. Why some railroads use wood ties, some railroads use concrete ties. There's a link in this video's description to go watch that. But anyway, that answered a whole lot of people, and I very, very seldom get any comments anymore on why don't we use concrete ties. Uh, we will never use concrete ties here. Next big, I think the next biggest question is, okay, we got a joint, let's say, you know, in that video, in video I had, I got to pull apart. Uh, so, they say, and I told you we don't have continuous welded rail here. This is our runaround track. Uh, why we don't have our, have continuous, why this track wasn't built with continuous welded rail. Why it was built jointed track. Uh, okay, and we can never get those long strings in here of the continuous welded rail but they said well why don't you just oh, thermite weld these if you have a pull apart well here's the reason why you see each of these joints have three bolt holes on this side three bolt holes on this side okay uh now if we had a pull apart 
you couldn't weld this here here's why here's why we can't thermite weld this joint or any other joint that we have because all of our joints have six bolt holes okay uh all of our thermite welding is done by railroad contractors uh, we don't have the tools the equipment to do thermite welding here i don't have a weld truck with the grinders and all of that so we contract it out first off i'm not sure exactly you know welds the cost of weld thermite welding depends on the distance the contractors have to travel uh, and we often have to book them in advance but uh last i heard it was 500 dollars per weld which includes the weld kit uh so and it could be much it could be more now because it's been a, a little while since we had and i didn't get the last pricing so could be but anyway 500 dollars. so here's why uh with that third bolt, bolt hole right there that close to where the weld is welders will not guarantee a weld made with that hole in the rail that close to weld uh, the rail can crack from the weld to that bolt hole uh, in some instances even the weld can crack so that's why we can't thermite weld all of these in order for us to thermite weld or flash butt weld flash butt welders will not guarantee that weld either but uh we don't get flash butt welders in all ours contractors are thermite welders but anyway if we had rail sticks with only these back two holes on each side it'd be no problem to thermite weld that and it would be guaranteed okay but with that third bolt hole that messes everything up so if we change thermite weld all of our rail every single rail stick's got to get replaced with either two holes or no holes on the end in order to, and then you're gonna have to make a weld here and a weld up there <laughs> and keep on going uh, so it turns into a very expensive proposition a very you know all of the rails got to get replaced and uh, very expensive operation labor involved plus new rail uh, it's <laughs> But anyway, that's why, and I don't know how many times I've answered this in the comments. That's why we don't thermite weld these joints, because that hole is too close to the end. Got it? Okay. Yeah. We got a uh, very unique operation here. And uh, they've been, uh, this week and last week, they've been running trains really steady. And that's great to see. That's really great to see. We do love to see coal moving. And... Uh, you know, we, we've only got two trackmen here to take care of all this track. Uh, we do get contractors in when needed. But, uh, you know, we try our best to keep this track. I try my best to keep this track within uh, Federal Code of Regulation spec safety standards. Okay? And uh, I think I do a pretty doggone good job at that. Uh, I would not be afraid to have an FRA inspector. We don't fall under FRA because we are isolated. Uh, if we interchange, we would fall under FRA, and you wouldn't see any videos if that happened. But uh, <clears throat> we don't fall under the FRA. We fall under Mine Safety Health Administration since we are a coal mine here. Okay, we're a coal mine that has a railroad. We're not a railroad. All right, that's another thing uh, people want to know, too. So uh, we do have my federal mine inspectors come out and... Uh, they do a lot of bridge inspections. Once in a while, they ride a track with me. But uh, anyway, that's that's where we're at. So okay, I hope you uh, hope you have enjoyed today's show, and I hope it's been educational. And I know it's I know the it should clear up a lot of questions. <laughs> okay, about the, a lot of different things. All right, have a really good day. And uh, happy rails to you, my friend, until we meet again.